My long mill CNC is here. Sweet. What do you think, Koto? Think we can do it? Yeah? Say hi. Okay. For this video, I wanted to share my first real project using my new CNC long mill Mark II. After cutting out a couple of the first project files from CNC's website and trying a quick V-carve, I wanted to do an actual 3D project and came up with a small ellipse-based tray, which also required two-sided milling. I did the 3D design using Top Solid Wood, a parametric 3D modeling program that I use for all of my cabinet projects. Based in France, Top Solid doesn't seem to be as well known here in the US, but they are around. It's available as a full CAD CAM package, but I only have the CAD portion. I've never had any CNC capability before now. When I purchased the long mill, I decided to go with V-Carb for my tool pathing because it is so common in the CNC community, and I knew that support and training resources would be more widely available. Okay, this is top solid wood. So I started by drawing an ellipse. I wanted to make the tray about 4 inches wide, so I set the minor radius at 2 inches and adjusted the major diameter until the proportions looked good to me. Then I cut the ellipse in half. Next, I revolved the 2D sketch 180 degrees to create this um, semi-ellipse sphere. Semi-ellipsosphere. Semi. Hemi. Hemi ellipsosphere. Yeah, hemi ellipsosphere. I don't know. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think this shape is really called and give it your best guess without Googling it. So anyway, after that, I created this three quarter inch thick slab because I wanted to make the tray from whatever three quarter inch scrap I had lying around the shop. Then I used the intersection of those two shapes to create this tray blank. The last step was to shell out the interior. At this point, I could easily play around with the shape by moving the three quarter inch slab up or down since I defined a parameter for its distance from the top of the, this, this thing. Once I was happy with the model, I exported it as an STL. So up until now, all I really knew about STL files was that I could get one out of top solid and into VCarve. My first try at it with the default settings ended up with my model having visible facets in VCarve and in the final wood tray. Luckily, I was able to sand them smooth with a little extra work. Now I understand sort of that an STL file is basically a bunch of triangles that approximate the curved surfaces in a 3D model. Looking at this sphere, for example, it's obvious that the smaller the triangles, the better the sphere looks. I haven't exactly mastered the export settings yet. I just played around with them until it didn't take forever to export and import the model and it looked better in VCarve's toolpath preview. So yeah, I also learned the value of VCarve's preview and to have a little faith in it. So now in VCarve, I started by setting up a new project for a 3 quarter inch thick workpiece with two-sided machining. Next was to import the 3D STL file from Top Solid and get it positioned properly. Once the model was imported, I adjusted the limit planes for each side. For the top, I needed to cut deep enough to clean the inside bottom of the tray. I decided I wanted to put a slight recess in the bottom side of the tray, which I hadn't thought of when I originally modeled it, but I figured I could just add a shallow pocket cut in the bottom. I guess I thought the bottom was thicker, because this is how my first test cut on a scrap of MDF came out. A little thin, right? Also, the fact that the MDF was a fat 32nd under 3 quarters of an inch didn't help. This time around, I'll make the underside recess cut about a 32nd shallower and I'm raising the limit plane from the top surface about a sixteenth inch above the inside tray bottom, hopefully leaving the bottom about an eighth of an inch thick. The limit plane from the bottom side I moved all the way down since I need to cut all the way to the top rim. After that I created a model boundary vector and three circles to cut holes for indexing pins for flipping the piece to machine the bottom, then copied all of these to the other side. I cut my indexing pins from some quarter inch aluminum rod I already had. Its diameter measured about 0.26 inches, so I made a series of test holes with the long mill and found that a 0.265 inch hole was a snug fit, but I could still get the pin out without too much trouble. 
On the other side, I then needed to create a pocket cut vector for that recessed bottom I mentioned. I offset the model boundary vector copied from the top and adjusted it to be just a little smaller than the bottom. Now some 3D tabs to hold it all together and I'm ready for some tool pathing. After moving my project datum to the lower left corner, I set up a 3D finish cut using a quarter inch ball nose bit, selecting my model and its boundary vector. I offset the limit boundary a little to let the cutter just sneak over the outer edge of the tray's rim to define it, figuring that when I cut through from the bottom with a ball nose bit, the cutter's radius won't be able to completely clean it up. Then I set up a pocket cut for the indexing pin holes. I made the pins just shy of an inch long, figuring I would machine half inch deep holes in both my workpiece and the spoil board. I'm going to go ahead and drill these with the ball nose bit, so I'm going 5 8 deep to account for the tip radius. I'm using the quarter inch ball nose for this entire project, so no tool changes needed. For the bottom side tool pathing, I started with the index holes for the spoil board. This will be the same pocket cut I set up for the top, except I started the cut at 3 quarters deep and cut 5 8 from there. Next is the pocket cut for the bottom recess using the vector I offset from the original model boundary vector. I'm going about 3 30 seconds deep for this using an offset strategy with a 15% step over. I like these little ridges that that leaves. Finally, I set up the 3D finish pass. Again, I'm staying with the quarter inch ball nose bit. This time, I'm using both of the ellipses as my boundary vectors, so the cutter won't have to waste a bunch of time traveling over the bottom of the tray. So, you can see here what I mentioned earlier about the radius of that quarter inch ball nose bit not being able to clean up the tray rim. If I could figure out how to make my 3D cut from the bottom a little deeper, this wouldn't be a problem. But so far, I don't know how to get my limit plane any lower than the thickness of the workpiece. I'm sure there's a simple solution to this, but V-Carve is still brand new to me, and I know I've got a lot to learn. If you know the answer to this, please leave it in the comments, and thanks in advance if you do. The last thing I need to do in V-Carve is save my G-Code. For the top, I can save both of my toolpaths together into one file. For the bottom, I'll of course need to save the spoil board index path into one file, so I can use the holes to locate my workpiece correctly and the 3D finish path into a second file. Then we're good to go. Now we're out in the shop and the long mill is starting a top surface 3D finish cut. The total top surface milling time was about 29 minutes including the index holes. I have a lot of sheet goods scraps in the shop so I use them to preserve my main spoil board. Here you can see a scrap of MDF clamped down that will save the main board from this project's screw and indexing holes. While this is cutting, I'll talk a little about the CNC long mill. But first, I've had a Shaper Origin for several years. If you're not familiar with that tool, it's basically a handheld CNC router. While it's great at what it does, I wanted to have a machine that I didn't have to literally handhold through its entire cutting process, so I started shopping for a real CNC machine. I say real in finger quotes because I definitely don't want to diss the Shaper Origin. It is an amazing tool. I've used it for many jobs that couldn't have been done on a stationary machine and I'm sure I'll continue to do so. I only mention the Origin to qualify it when I say I started shopping for my first CNC. So after a lot of online window shopping and watching tons of YouTube videos, the long mill seemed like it would be the best value for me. It looked like the quality would be solid, there were lots of happy users, and the cost of entry was fairly friendly. I also liked the assembly required element because I knew I'd learn a lot about the machine from that process, and I loved doing that kind of shit anyway. I finally decided on the long mill Mark II 30x30. I gotta say that CNC provides the most user friendly kit I've ever seen. Detailed instructions with all the parts in labeled bags and even spares for most of them, so you're not left hung out to dry when you lose a screw in that pile of sawdust on the floor. Assembly took me about a half a day for the machine, plus another hour or two for the spoil boards and T-tracks. That was the fun part. The real work is deciding on software and learning to use it. I mentioned earlier what I use and why. 
So far, I'm really happy with my decision. I've added a relay to my setup that switches the router and shop vac on and off automatically, and I love that. I also hijacked my son's old PS4 game controller and used that for manually jogging the router and doing XYZ probes. Well, here's the finished tray, sanded, branded, and lacquered. I'm really happy with how this came out and super excited to see what I can do next on my long mill. Thanks for watching and I really hope you'll give my video a like and subscribe to my channel. Cheers!